Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for coming out this evening. My name is Hugo Cisneros. I'm a civil engineer with the Port of Los Angeles, and I'm the project manager for the Avalon Promenade and Gateway. Uh, we want to start off this evening with a few uh, words from our uh, new commissioner, uh, Commissioner Moreno Linares. If you would uh, please come up and say a few opening remarks, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. He's a lot taller than I am. Thank you, Hugo. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody and just thank you especially because I know it's hard. Um, in December, we all have so many things to do and especially in the evening. So I really, really appreciate you. The staff appreciates you for taking the time to be here. Um, this this um, project will have its value to you based on if you see in it what you added to it. And so if you can count and give us your voice, then you, I think, will appreciate it even more. So we appreciate you for taking the time for being here. I'd like to thank the, the staff, the team that has worked on it so hard. Um, and hopefully when we walk out of here, we're all happy with what we have. Or at the very least, um, we have consensus in what, um, what we are proposing. So thank you for being here. Muy buenas noches y muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Yo sé que en diciembre, en la tarde, es difícil venir. Todos tenemos cosas que hacer, pero especialmente en estos días y luego hoy que con este frío y este viento. Así de que de veras es un sacrificio estar aquí, pero es un sacrificio muy valioso porque este proyecto que se está planeando, cuando esté completo, cuando todos veamos que se incluyeron ideas, um, que se tomó nuestra voz en cuenta para planearlo, pienso que le vamos a, a, a tomar mucho más valor. Y son cosas como estar presente en esta reunión, a lo, que lo, va, lo que va a dar ese valor al proyecto y que va a hacer que sea un proyecto um, que sirva las necesidades que nosotros tenemos. Así es de que de nuevo muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Espero que cuando salgamos de aquí eh, hemos um, llegado a, a un acuerdo. No todos vamos a tener lo que queremos dentro de este proyecto, pero sí un acuerdo en que se hizo lo mejor posible con lo, con lo que tenemos. Así es de que muchísimas gracias y espero que cuando nos enseñen lo que se está proponiendo, eh, estemos todos contentos. Gracias. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Commissioner. So for tonight, our agenda is, we are first going to go over the workshop uh, number one for those who were not able to attend or did not have an opportunity to view the presentation which was posted online. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a brief overview just to bring everybody up to speed and, uh, and uh, to present the ideas that we shared that evening. Uh, we're gonna go over a summary of the meeting, what we talked about, and then we're gonna go over the questionnaire results. We got very good response to the questionnaire, uh, so we'll be sharing those results and uh, the path moving forward. Uh, we're going to then show the preferred alternatives based on the feedback. Uh, we presented a lot of options and uh, we got feedback and we took the, that, that information and started moving forward with more specific ideas that are specific to this project based on the public feedback. Uh, the two preferred alternatives that we're really going to focus on are the entry plaza and the pedestrian bridge. Uh, after that, we'll talk about the park features, uh, which we look to incorporate in the project. And then lastly, the next steps, uh, uh, going from this meeting to the third uh, public meeting. Just to set the framework of the Wilmington waterfront, I'm gonna briefly go over uh, the major projects which make up the Wilmington waterfront. And many of you were involved back in 2006, 2009. There was a large, there, there was a, a big uh, community outreach effort at that time to get input. And the major projects that have come out of that uh, effort are the Wilmington Waterfront Park. Uh, many of you are familiar with it, of course. Um, then we have the Wilmington Waterfront Promenade, which is the blue area down at the bottom, which incorporates Banny's Landing. That project is currently in design, uh, and it's consistent with the public outreach that was previously done for the Wilmington Waterfront. Uh, we also have an area that I've identified for future commercial development, which is in the brown up at the top between C Street and Harry Bridges. And then we're gonna, and uh, of course we're gonna focus on uh, tonight is the Avalon Promenade and Gateway. Uh, and again, remember this process, uh, we're doing three public meetings. The first one, which we had uh, on June 6th. And again, we're gonna share the results of that meeting tonight. 
Uh, today, the second meeting, we're coming back and asking for more feedback on, on, on especially two of the major components that we really want to get direction on uh, from the public. And then we're gonna have a third meeting, uh, most likely in late January, where we'll present a full concept uh, with all the elements, all the park elements, and in that meeting, hopefully get the final buy-off to move into design. So tonight, we're still gonna get more feedback. We're gonna ask more questions. Uh, we still wanna hear your comments. There's still an opportunity for your voice to be heard. Um, and then that'll help us get, uh, like I said, to the third public meeting. Uh, one other thing about this project, uh, if you see, look at it up there on the map, you see how it's a key component for connectivity between the Wilmington Waterfront Park and the Wilmington Waterfront Promenade, which is this area here. Uh, we need to provide that linkage uh, for, for visitors, for the public, for the residents, uh, to have one unified Wilmington Waterfront, starting at the park, leading all the way to the water's edge. Um, okay, uh, so the first workshop, uh, uh, just to briefly go over what the purpose was of that first workshop was. Again, it was to share with you the components of the project. There was uh, six or so major components um, that we needed feedback on. Um, we got feedback from the community, obviously, on, on those. The objective of, of the project and the meeting was to explore connectivity, uh, to provide or to look for opportunities for an iconic element within the project. We wanted to celebrate Wilmington, uh, provide a sustainable promenade, and provide opportunities for future commercial uh, development. So we're looking at all these as our objectives as we move uh, through this concept phase and public outreach phase uh, to help guide us for when we get into design. Okay, uh, I am next gonna turn it over to uh, Ray Ferris, uh, he is the project manager for T.Y. Lynn and leading up the, uh, the, the effort for our consultant team. Uh, Ray? Yep. Thank you, Hugo. Well, it's very exciting to see the strong attendance. Uh, we're, uh, we're equally excited about the project. Uh, we uh, uh, spent a lot of effort in the last month and a half or so to incorporate your comments and to address uh, many of the issues that were raised. As Ugo have said earlier, uh, the main elements that we were looking at, and you see them here, uh, starting at Harry, Harry Bridges Boulevard, the entry plaza, which really is at the north end, connects Avalon Boulevard, and that's where Avalon Boulevard transforms into a promenade that connects to the waterfront at, at, at a landing area. The uh, Avalon Promenade goes through an open space, which is a park space. Uh, we looked at a number of alternatives for the entry plaza, uh, and then we will, based on the um, results of the survey, we're gonna show you multiple alternatives that address those results. We also, looked at multiple alternatives for the pedestrian bridge that goes over the railroad and that connects the open space into the waterfront, and you will have an opportunity to see those. Uh, we have discussed in the last meeting a number of varieties of options within the park itself, and we're gonna discuss further those, and we, we kinda we streamline those into multiple elements, and you'll see those uh, in the presentation. We also talked about parking, parking location and space and how it connects to and facilitates your connection to the uh, waterfront. Um, the next step is we're gonna uh, ask, I'm gonna ask Noel Chamble, who's our lead architect. He's gonna be presenting the, the uh, uh, last meeting's uh, results and uh, public comments and surveys. And then he's gonna move on in presenting the, uh, the uh, the alternates for the entry plaza and the, uh, and the pet bridge, and then we're gonna move into the open space and talk specifically about some of the design alternatives. No? Thanks, Ray. Good evening, everyone. 
Uh, as Ray mentioned, I'm going to touch on those results, and then we're going to talk about Entry Plaza, Pedestrian Bridge, and then we'll look at some uh, park features at the end. Um, so a quick overview of our last meeting, workshop number one. Uh, we had great attendance, as we do now. Um, I see many familiar faces, actually. Um, many of you are there as well. Um, we had a great breakout session, um, information, questions, answers, and you guys got your hands dirty doing some design work as well. Um, and then we did our questionnaires. So the questionnaires we did in the room, hard copies. Um, we wound up with about 82 hard copy questionnaires, but then we also had it out online, and we got fantastic response online, uh, whopping 477 responses. So that uh, total 559 responses from the community is just absolutely fantastic. Um, I do this sort of thing on lots of projects all over the US, and that is a, a really great turnout for uh, feedback. So these results that we're going to go through, um, needless to say, are really representative of your community, which is, a, I think, a really great um, thing to be proud of. So this is what that questionnaire looked like. Um, if you recall, we asked for your feedback on the entry plazas, showed you some concept. Uh, feedback on different bridge types, and then we talked specifically about different features of landscape elements and parking. Uh, so I'll go through the results of all of those. Um, for the entry plaza, we showed you uh, kind of four different categories of samples of um, structures and landscape spaces, um, ranging from whimsical to just more sculpted, um, more traditional, and then uh, formal type landscapes. And you can see there that the whimsical came in first place, uh, followed quickly behind by the sculpted landscapes. So taking those uh, inputs into account, you'll see that represented in our um, conceptual options for the entry plaza uh, in a little bit. Um, also, um, for the landscape design, we asked you what type of space you'd like to see in your park, what sorts of uses you'd like, an active use or a passive use. And you can see there that it was pretty much split 50-50 right down the middle, um, which is great. That means um, we don't have to choose one or the other. We're going to try and incorporate a little bit of both of those into the park space. Um, and so that'll be uh, definitely an element of our design. Um, and then the final structure is that uh, pedestrian bridge. Um, so we showed you garden type bridges, uh, basically bridges with lots of plants on them, uh, arch bridges, trusses, girders, and cable supported structures. And you can see that bridges with plants on them, the garden bridges, came out a clear favorite, um, as well as the arch. Um, and those two uh, really make up the bulk of all the votes. Um, so again, we focus the majority of our design efforts on those um, two design concepts. Um, and then in the landscape design, uh, we also asked you where you would prefer your parking to be located. Um, so we kind of give you two options, closer to the waterfront or closer to Harry Bridges. Uh, again, you can see it's almost a 50-50 split, 60-40, um, but um, again, we're going to try to accommodate both of those aspects in our, in our conceptual design, have a little bit each. Um, this was the... Next question on the questionnaire was about uh, commercial opportunities, so retail spaces or open marketplace type spaces. You can see overwhelmingly this was something that the community favored. Um, we're working to incorporate these types of designs in our landscape as well. And then we're also interested in integrating into the landscapes and all the structures an extra level of informational um, identity into the project. So we asked you kind of what type of information uh, you would prefer, whether it's information about the port, its history, fun facts about shipping, um, or about the national geography and kind of natural landscape of the area, or more specifically about the history of the community of Wilmington. And you can see that the green there, uh, history of Wilmington is the overwhelming favorite. Um, and so we're going to work kind of a timeline into the project of community history for Wilmington, as well as uh, probably a smattering of some of these other um, details as well. 
So now today in workshop number two, we're going to uh, use those great results and ask you to provide a little bit more feedback. We're going to talk about the entry plaza and the bridges. Um, more specifically, I'll show you two concepts for each. So we're going to have two entry plaza design concepts first, and then I'll show you two bridge concepts second. And then we'll um, touch on some more uh, landscape features at the end. So the first entry plaza monument concept is um, in response to the feedback for a, whim a whimsical entry monument. Um, so this is a really iconic, eye-catching design um, located right on the curbside of Harry Bridges Boulevard. You'd be able to see it from a distance. Um, it's a clear beacon that this is the entry to the pathway down to the waterfront. Um, it's symmetrical design is kind of a 3D play on a traditional gateway arch. So you kind of have four gateway arches that all focus concentrically on the, the major axes of the area. So Harrier Bridges Boulevard going one direction and then Avalon Boulevard the other direction. Um, and you can see in this photo that the Avalon Boulevard axis will then continue into the park um, going through that entry plaza monument. So we have these larger um, framing members that maybe look like people holding hands or, um, I don't know, kind of open up to interpretation, whatever you like. Uh, and then uh, draped across that is a, is a, um, a tensile structure. So that's um, a really cool kind of fabric membrane that will provide a little bit of shade and shelter underneath and will make a really nice gathering spot down below. Now the second alternative is um, a sundial concept. And so this is uh, a little bit more in response to that sculpted um, typology. And so here this is really cool design because it's simple and elegant, but also very site specific. So the, the angle of that vertical um, beam is, matches exactly the uh, azimuth of the sun at the latitude for Wilmington. Um, and so as we all know how sundial works, um, down in the ground plane, there's little markers and the shadow from that um, pointed needle will trace the time of the sun um, throughout the day and also it changes throughout the year as well. Uh, so you can have a really engaging uh, public space down below it. Um, but then also as you can see at night, uh, we've tried to add this little extra feature that at night it still functions as well. So those markings in the ground plane would be able to light up and still continue to tell the time as it goes through the nighttime hours. And then as seen from the ground, you know, this is a pretty clear, simple beacon. Um, it's very large, but also nice and sculptural. Um, it sort of resembles maybe the prow of a ship or um, maybe a nautical water animal. Um, that sort of kind of more contemporary type shape. So those are our two entry plaza concepts that we'll ask for your feedback on in the questionnaires at the end. And now as we move into the two bridge concepts, the first uh, is called the garden bridge. Uh, essentially the idea here is to have a very simple structure that continues the movement from the park seamlessly over onto the bridge and into the waterfront park on the other side. So this is um, a 12 foot wide pathway that is um, flanked on either side by kind of meandering planter boxes. And you can see there, uh, just tries to take as much of that greenery from the landscape onto the bridge as you go across. And also provide a few little overlooks here and there, spots where you can get up to the edge and see the, um, see the views out on either direction. So this is what it would look like from down below, um, kind of from the railroad track view. The new park, is on the right and the waterfront is on the left. You can see the waterfront park does have, um, does have a few pathways that would go down underneath it. So you would occasionally see this view um, as well as um, an access road. And then of course the railroad tracks are what you're seeing here in gray. Basically everything here is just a simple massing mocked up um, and we're just trying to focus on the concept of the bridge structure. And then 
And so the fence over the bridge is a requirement. The left-hand side is elevated, so all the pedestrian traffic goes to an elevated, um, that park over there is elevated, and similarly the park on the right side, our new park, is elevated at that point as well. So here's a view from the deck view. So this is the primary pedestrian perspective as you're walking from one park to the other park. Um, again, the idea here is to continue that park atmosphere from one to the other. And this is looking back the other way. So this is if you were at the waterfront park, uh, looking back towards our new park. And so this is uh, the final view there, um, looking at kind of the underside of the structure from the waterfront park, again, looking back at the... So this is the second concept for the bridge type. Um, this is an arch bridge. It is an asymmetrical arch design, which allows us to meet the clearance requirements over the railroad tracks, um, and simultaneously providing a really nice, iconic, and unique uh, concept. Um, some people have mentioned that the, the form, overall form of the structure is emblematic of a W for Wilmington. Um, but you can see that it really has a, a nice striking silhouette and will also be pretty attractive at night when kind of lit um, minimalistically but very elegantly. The design has a arch going right down the middle of the structure. Um, so the pathways, there are two pathways of even size on either side. Uh, that allows for a, a planted strip to go down the middle. So again, uh, even though we're not calling this the garden bridge, this, it does incorporate a lot of planting on it. Um, this design allows for really nice views out in each direction towards the waterfront, uh, as well as back towards the park in both ways. And then also interspersed with that planted strip is opportunities to provide um, little folded benches and things like that um, that are built into that uh, kind of sculpted planter space between all the cables, which really creates a, a really nice spot to sit and rest and get out of the way of maybe some of the heavier traffic that's moving through to the park. You can see from this perspective that the, one of the key differences between these two concepts is that um, the previous design, the garden bridge design, would have carried this axis seamlessly straight across because the arch design um, is a slightly more involved concept, um, it needs to have a shorter distance across the railroad track, so we're kind of going at an angle from the railroad track with the garden design. With this concept, we can have a shorter distance by uh, connecting at this point. That allows the Avalon Promenade to have sort of a, a nice um, finishing spot that provides a really nice overlook looking back at the bridge. Um, it also provides a nice culmination to maybe a timeline element that would be in the park, um, as well as really great views out beyond at the waterfront. So here's a view of that arch, looking at it from that overlook position in the park. Sort of a dusk shot. Um, as is the case with both these concepts, uh, lighting and some of the smaller details of railings and things like that will be fine-tuned as we progress through the concepts. Um, but you can see, as I'm showing you here, the light color is always changing. Um, all these things are state-of-the-art, um, low energy, um, high color changing, uh, full dynamic spectrum options that really provide a lot of character. So here's another view of that. this time in green. And then finally, uh, when you're on the structure, you get a real nice sense of the bridge above you, but also, um, again, that continuation of that planted strip that runs along the middle of the bridge, um, as well as views out towards the park and towards the waterfront in either direction. Um, and then you can see there a better view of of how those benches and um, resting places might be interspersed within all that. And with that, I think we're, um, we're now going to move on to some landscape 
images and show you some concepts for that. For that, I'll bring up our landscape architect for the project, Yun Su. So, thank you. Thank you, Noel. Um, uh, I'm Yun Su Kim, landscape architect for the project. I'm glad to be here. Um, so, we are design. We have been designing the park pictures. Uh, based on what we heard from the first, first uh, design workshop that hopefully that you guys, many of you guys have attended that meeting. And so we, uh, as, as Noor presented, the, you know, at the first workshop, you, you know, resident wanted both passive and active spaces for the park. So we had tried to accommodate those uh, park features, such as the family park, while it's open space, it can be used in many, many different functions, like picnics or you know, kids playing out here, or just you, know, you can nap. The, under the tree or something like that. Um, also, along the, you know, we have a pretty good size of park, about 11 acres, so it allows us to have pretty nice uh, loop of the, uh, you know, uh, multi-purpose trails. You know, people can ride bicycle or run or walk as you, at your pace, or it's, it provides about, you know, three quarter miles of, uh, you know, loop. So that's pretty good, good length for the, any, any exercise or any casual walk. And also, we are provide. We are plan to provide some of the active, um, like a, you know, um, like a fitness uh, equipment and more other active uh, you know, activities in the park throughout the um, the uh, property. And uh, you know, as you know, Wilmington has a really, really rich history of you know from you know, Spanish uh, land grant or Pina Spanings arriving in in, uh, in this town and naming the town to. Um, the new, new San Pedro to Wilmington and the oil industry, oil industries and port and rails. We want to show, and it's very, very important to you know, um, show what the history has been done for, for, for the uh, community. And uh, it's, it's not only for the educational background, but also it, it's very important to remember what has happened so it can, it can you know, flow down to the next generation. So, um, and, uh, the, the, throughout the park, we'll have a lot of opportunities because we'll incorporate very drought-tolerant plants and low-maintenance plants and the native plant gardens. So that will be that will provide a lot of uh, educational uh, opportunities for the adults and kids alike. Um, some of the park park features, as uh, Noel mentioned, uh, there's a um, so pedestrian access. The, this is the Avalon alignment that go, goes through the bridge all the way to the waterfront park. And uh, as you remember that, you know, there's, we were fortunate to have, uh, you know, larger land here at, at the corner to accommodate um, about 100, about 100 uh, you know, parking space. And on down the south, it's, it's about 50 uh, parking space that can be allowed. And uh, as Noel mentioned before that um, we are, I think it's very important to understand that there's opportunity that we can accommodate, you know, you know like a farmer's market or art festivals and other events um, um, throughout the park and, uh, you know, seasonal events. Okay, thank you, Yunsu. Uh, just uh, before we go on to the next step, just to remind everybody, the concepts we're presenting today are just that. They're just concepts. They, need a lot, they still need to be refined. We still need additional input. Uh, but this is just to give you kind of a flavor of the idea and our interpretation uh, of the feedback and the direction that we're looking at. Uh, so we're going to ha have another questionnaire today to ask for your preferences on, on the two entry plazas that, that we're presenting today, as well as the two uh, pedestrian bridges. In addition, we are providing space for you to provide just any general comments, feedback that you would like to provide uh, to assist us as we move forward, refine these concepts, uh, and go on to a preferred alternative. Uh, these options are all, you know, we're working within um, uh, the framework of the Port's Public Access Investment Plan. Uh, so we have a budget, and the options that we're presenting today are all within that budget. So that there is, you know, that, that constraint, but what we have here, again, is, is within the budget. And we've got to keep that in mind as we move forward and incorporate as many options, uh, as many details, and different types of characteristics within this development. <clears throat> so the comment uh, deadline uh, is starting today. If you want to fill those out, uh, we would appreciate them. We're going to collect them today. Uh, we're also going to make the questionnaire available online. 
similar to what we did for the first uh, uh, public workshop. Uh, we found that to be very successful as the slides show for you know, over 450 uh, responses online. So we hope to get uh, a, a good uh, number of responses for this questionnaire as well. Uh, the time, uh, let's see, we're gonna be taking feedback up until January the 12th. And as of right now, we are tentatively scheduling the third uh, workshop, the third meeting on January 31st, which will also be held here at Banning's Landing at six o'clock. Um, but that's tentative, but uh, you know, just, just pencil that in in your calendar uh, to, to come back and, uh, and we can present the final uh, preferred alternative uh, on the overall park. So that's, uh, that's what we have for today, and thank you again for coming out.